give you a match by the time it's taking this interview. And uh, could you please uh, first introduce yourself to our audience? Sure. Uh, my name is Ian Morrison. I'm a professor of mathematics at Fordham University in New York City. Uh, and my specialty is algebraic geometry and particularly moduli spaces of curves, which is the subject of this workshop. Yeah. Uh, can you tell more about tell me more about uh, your activity here? So uh, well, so the um, the workshop lasted for really almost ten weeks, a little yeah. more, because um, the institute uh, kindly uh, supported a postdoc um, uh, professor Jack Rizanga from the University of Illinois Chicago to come in December and to give a series of preliminary lectures um, to local mathematicians who were interested in the workshop. Yeah. And then um, beginning in the first week of January, uh, we've had uh, six weeks of uh, lectures and problem sessions in the workshop. Uh, three weeks in January, then a two week break for the Tet uh, New Year holiday and then three weeks in February. Yeah. So what do you think about uh, the workshop in overall? Uh, well, I mean, the, you know, one thing we discovered was that um, our, our expectations of the uh, preparation of the Vietnamese audience were yeah. slightly optimistic. Um, uh, but uh, I think things worked out nonetheless uh, very well. Uh, simply because both the local mathematicians and the visitors uh, were very cooperative and, and tried to find a way to uh, run a workshop that was uh, useful to the, that could teach the you know, Vietnamese audience uh, and, and spark their interest in algebraic geometry, but uh, still allow the visitors to really explain the kind of problems that they are interested in. Um, so, uh, mm -hmm. Professor Zanga did an extremely good job with the lectures. The students were made, I think, a great deal of progress. And then, based on his feedback, um, one of my uh, main roles was simply to talk with each of the visitors and work out with them uh, some way for them to discuss the problems they work on in a way that would be accessible to the audience. And as I think that worked, that's worked out very well, and we can see that because in the last week of the workshop, we have essentially all the, uh, the members of the audience who were there in the first week. And, and, and they've worked very hard, and I want to thank them yeah. Uh, also. Yeah, and uh, do you see or do you, do you get or do you experience uh, at the workshop uh, what you expect to? Well, I mean, my, you know, in some sense, I, I was uh, encouraged to sort of propose the workshop uh, by Professor Dick Gross uh, of Harvard, who's under a uh, scientific advisory board. And he told me that, you know, we shouldn't be um, too optimistic about what we could do, but that um, we would find a lot of interest in our work. And so, I mean, my. My other goals, besides purely teaching mathematics, were to, on the one hand, um, provide, I think, in, in amongst the visitors, there, I realized there was a lot of interest in coming to learn about uh, Vietnam, Vietnam and Vietnamese mathematics. And that can be seen from the fact that the visitors all uh, provided funds for their own travel, and most of them spent 20 or more hours in each direction to come to the workshop. Um, and, you know, so I think that on their side, they, they did uh, come away with a very positive experience, both of the Institute and, and the city. And um, on the Vietnamese side, I wanted to um, create some contacts um, between both the professors here and at the Institute of Mathematics and the visitors, and also some opportunities uh, for students who um, are at the Institute and other institutions in Hanoi to begin, if they're interested, to study 
um, algebraic geometry abroad. And I think that's going to happen. Um, um, one professor of Fong Ho High has been um, you know, very helpful, and we've been discussing now some plans to uh, send a couple of students to uh, foreign universities where participants in the workshop have indicated they are interested in receiving Vietnamese students. So that for me was, if that comes, happens, I'll be very happy. Okay, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> yeah. So about the institute, it's uh, the first trip to the institute? Yes. Uh, yeah, it's so not my first trip to Hanoi. I mean, I was here and that was one reason I, I liked the city. I wanted to yeah. uh, come back. and, and, and I. I um, the, the institute, um, you know, has provided, I think, you know, a very good environment, um, both for the lectures and for just, um, you know, the other, the other activities of the visitors to be able to work on papers, discuss mathematics. The the, the working environment of the institute has been very good. Yeah, thank you. Um, do you have any suggestion for the institute to organize uh, such? Uh, even better or to be more effective as a institute for mathematics? I think, so I, I thought about this and I, I, I think there are um, two things. One, kind of administrative, yeah. uh, which would just be that, um, you know, it was a lot of, there was a lot of confusion and a lot of, um, there needed to be many, many exchanges in many cases about um, the visas and the registration. Okay. So I, th I think if um, the institute could um, create uh, some kind of um, online um, system where whenever you run a workshop like this, in, in one visit you can collect from each participant all the information you need for their not necessarily their, their travel because they may not know the exact flights and dates, but the information to register them for the workshop and to prepare the visa approval letters. Yeah, like, that, like we were trying to do. Yeah, we, we, we tried and we didn't quite get it right. And so I think we could have done that better and it would have saved both me and you and uh, Leilin and uh, Lana a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of work, you know. So, and then. Um, I, the, you know, I was very grateful that the institute offered to bring somebody to give the lectures. I mean, I think that if we had, if you hadn't done that, it would have been a much less successful workshop. Um, but I, I think that it would have been even better if there could have been more lectures and more spaced out. And I wonder if you could consider in the future um, not necessarily bringing the lecturer to Hanoi, but setting up uh, some kind of a, a, ver a very good internet connection. So this is something we're now doing in my department, where the, the lecturer could be uh, outside Vietnam, yeah. is being uh, photographed, yeah. and he can see a room in Hanoi where the students are, and they can stop him and ask questions, they can see the board, and then you have also video of the lecture, and so if students want to look again at a topic and go over it. And then, you, you know, because I think, you know, we were very lucky that, that Professor Zenga was on a fellowship and he could take five weeks extra to come and give this course. but. In a future case, that might not happen, and it, it would have been probably better to start earlier and do it once a week. Um, so, so I think that you know that's the other, um, you know, sort of uh, piece of infrastructure that that for future workshops, um, starting maybe three months before, if you can identify, it doesn't maybe even need to be one person. But if you have a way for lectures to be streamed to, to Hanoi, yeah. some response, and record the videos, I think that would yeah. be something to look into. Yeah. So maybe you mean a uh, uh, kind of video uh, conference? Or yes, right. Yeah. And so uh, recently uh, there is the, the trend for MOOC and MOOC 
to be yeah. right. So we uh, well, I, I, I think it would, I think it, in a MOOC there's not, you know, I think in mathematics the, you know, there should be a lecture where right now the students can ask a question when they don't follow. So, so that, that kind of um, in video conference, um, but then, you know, the app, but then if you're doing that, you can put the uh, video of the lecture, um, on your website, and then students at any time can come back and look at that. So, for example, um, when I was discussing with Professor Gross the first time was in uh, 2011. Um, he gave a series of lectures called the Eilenberg Lectures in New York, and uh, that was at Columbia, and they video those lectures, and in the middle of his lectures, uh, I had to go to Germany and give a school for two weeks. But while I was in Germany, I was able to look at the two lectures that I missed, and I was able to keep up with the course. So, I, I, and, and in that way, you don't need to bring the, you can have a longer series of preparatory lectures, you don't need to actually bring somebody to uh, no, so that so that I think would, would have been you know if I had this to do over yeah. again I'd try to yes. try to okay, do that. Good, uh, yeah. Like yeah. That. yeah. Uh, and uh, could you also tell us more about your study in Hamburg? Do you have other social activities? Well, that so that's the other I mean you know yeah. thing that I, because uh, the international participants you know they were coming for a fairly short time coming a long way and. It, uh, you know, fairly substantial expense. I wanted to them to really get an opportunity to learn about Hanoi and Vietnam that just as a tourist they would not be able to. Um, and the institute has been really uh, very helpful in that. You, you and the volunteers, um, you know, have made it. So every week, just about, uh, we've been able to uh, run an excursion on Wednesday when there are no lectures so people can see the main uh, cultural sites in Hanoi and most of the weekends of the conference uh, the, those people who are staying over have been able to take a one or two day trip so we've been to uh,